ammunition you see featured in this episode of The Quiet Rifle came to me courtesy of Herman's Sporting Guns. They gassed me up with a whole bunch of extra ammo, so if you see something you like, make sure that you jump on over to their website. There will be a link in the description or type in hermansguns.com.au in the search bar and off you go. They have everything from a .177 Dreamline, beautiful, classic, walnut, small, right the way up to Darth Vader's gun, the DSR-50. So there's definitely something on there that you want. Go check them out. They've got Sabre Tactical, Crafford and Lift, Hybrid Slugs, lots of different types of ammo. So if you see something you like, support the people who support me. Ladies and gentlemen, Crafford and Lift have come to the party. They've delivered me a delightful package of all of these goodies that you see here before me. We've got the, uh, the adjustable stock. We have the uh, locked and unloaded empty chamber indicator with the lovely Crafford and Lift on the other side. We have their very nice new adjustable cheek piece. We have, of course, these uh, class leading stickers. I have to say, these are great stickers. They're much nicer than my stickers. <laughs> but, uh, and also finally, we have inverted safeties. So uh, I've only got one gun and I've got four inverted safeties. So if you share this video and you like Crafford and Lift and follow them on Instagram, um, send me a DM and uh, the first three people that choose a unique color, you guys can have a, uh, an inverted safety for free. I'll send it to you. And whichever one's left, I'll put on my gun. They also sent me this wonderful piece of gear here. This is a uh, T-rail to Arca Swiss plate. So um, you can slide it up and down in that T-rail there, wherever you want it to be. I've moved mine so that uh, two of the attachment points are biting into the rail and uh, the rest of it's hanging back off because uh, you can get your gun to balance very nicely on a tripod if it's uh, balanced just in front of the trigger guard where the factory one normally is. That's, that's pretty much the perfect balance point right there. So you can still get in and out to your um, filler adapter. So, sweet. So, today we are going to use all of this stuff. We're going to uh, take the old uh, ATN X sight off the top we're going to put my Element Titan on there and uh, we're going to pretty much set it up as a bench rest gun once again because I want to do some long range shooting with the FX Hybrid 25s. So let's get to it. Look at that. What an absolute masterpiece that is. Beautiful gear all over it. Element Titan on the top, looking very swisho. Giving the, uh, the ATN a bit of a rest and uh, putting the old uh, Schmidt and Bender back on top of the safe with a few other scopes. So, interesting times ahead. Interesting times. Crafford and Lift, adjustable stock, just outstanding. I like to uh, put just the little tiniest bit of stank on it, kick it out a little bit. So it sort of points your shoulder in the right direction. And then we've got the adjustable cheek piece, which I'm going to be running on its bottom setting because it's got uh, a little bit of height to it. Uh, and 
there we have my one piece X Tech mount. This is the first complaint that I have with my element scope here. This little nitrogen purging thing is in the way. So if you are running a scope with very low clearance in its mount, um, that might be an issue for you. This is, however, a particularly low uh, scope mount for what it is. Um, but yep, being that it is just an old uh, crummy 34mm ex-military one, I just uh, cut a big hole in it because that's what you do. You spray paint things, you cut holes in things. If it looks stupid but it works, it isn't stupid. Mmm, so juicy. Oh. So good. Love that zero stop. Same spot every time. Thinking about drilling a little uh, indentation where both of the marks are for this um, T-piece to arc a rail adapter, just so that the uh, uh, grub screws have a little bit more to bite into, but uh, I think I'll leave it alone for now. Very happy, very happy. Just gotta wait for this rain to pass now. I'm all dressed up and I've got nowhere to go. Maybe tomorrow. Check out this brilliant hat. It's made out of towels. <laughs> this is my Halloween costume. I'm the ghost of terrible fashion sense. Mint. So, foul weather ensued. But uh, a couple of days later, I managed to, uh, because we had so much rain, I did end up getting a day off work because all of the local roadworks around the place have uh, shut down, which lowered our level of work for a little while and I ended up getting a day off. So I went down to the range and uh, got myself my little table and my uh, awning and my little Pajero down there, set up the range for 100 meters, zeroed it at 25 and then uh, tap a tap a tap it by way into uh, Strelock Pro to figure out the uh, elevation for my 100 meter shooting. It went fairly well. I had a little bit of an issue with the cheek piece. The, because I'm using a single shot loader, um, it sort of, it, it folds out to the side and then you put the, normally you put the pellet or the slug into the back of the single shot loader, shut it and then run the bolt forwards. But um, I had to push it in from the front instead of from the back, which was a little weird, but um, not, not that big of a deal. It's only because the quick release for that cheek piece is sort of on the right hand side where you would normally feed the magazine in and I think if you were running a magazine you would never even notice it wouldn't be an issue at all um, but even if you are running a single shot loader like I am from Calm I love my Calm gear you just feed it in from the other direction and uh, all's well that ends well the table that I'm shooting off is just a rickety plastic table and I think I need to get rid of it and stop using it as bench rest because every time I change my position slightly everything changes but um, I'm planning on setting up something a bit more permanent and uh, yeah, maybe even building a bench. That might be a fun video to make. As far as the adjustable stock goes, that thing is wonderful. It's uh, much more consistent than a sandbag, which is what I typically use because um, in days gone by, uh, doing different types of centerfire shooting, the sandbag is it's just easy. So, uh, like you can throw it in your webbing when you're out in the bush or whatever, and you just uh, it just works on like almost every surface and it's a very stable way of anchoring the rear end of your gun but it doesn't really work super great for uh, bench rest type stuff you can do it obviously lots of people do i do it too and um, I've, I've loved it for a long time but uh, that stock with the adjustable pin at the back of it it has a uh, a little bit that you can unwind to do large adjustments and then a um, a threaded piece on the end of it that you can sort of thread up and down for super fine adjustments and once you get it to where you want it it just stays there it's just it's like it's magnetically stuck to the target it's great it's very very nice so big up for that that's a great idea very happy I found with the uh, the element Titan the new scope that I'm trying out it um, the glass on it very nice of very much enjoyed using it so far and, and compared to the Schmidt and Bender it's a little bit easier to use as far as eye relief goes. Um, the Schmidt and Bender up at full power is a little tricky, it's sort of very uh, 
fussy about where you put your head. If you're not in the right spot, you, uh, you just can't see anything. But um, with this one, it's much more forgiving. So positive on that note. And on a bit of a negative note, didn't really enjoy using the parallax. It seems to be a little bit too firm in some parts and maybe uh, a, like it's like very firm in some parts and then in other parts it's just firm and because the uh, the knurling on it is so aggressive um, it's sort of a little bit tricky to to get it to do what you want to do without having sore hands but uh, I don't know I might just be soft and it might just need to be run in so I'm not 100% sure what's going on there but uh, we'll figure that out as time goes on as far as uh, the groups that I shot go they weren't really anything to write home about. It was consistent, but uh, it was shooting consistently at about sort of two and a half inches at 100 meters, which um, wasn't super impressive. So I think there's a bit more work to be done there. I've got a little bit of finagling and tuning to do. Um, I think I need to maybe even pull out that liner, give it a good scrub and uh, see if cleaning it helps. And also one thing I wanna do is change the depth of my pellet probe and see how that goes. I think the pellet probe itself might just be a little bit too shallow. I think maybe if I wind it up a little bit more so it's riding just on the edge or just over where it is at the moment so that it basically lines up with the back wall where the magazine inserts, I think we might uh, get a bit more out of it. Because um, I think it's sitting a little too far back and sort of maybe isn't doing things as efficiently as it could be. It's sort of a suspicion that I've had for a while, but I've never really put enough effort into pulling the whole gun apart to adjust it. So I think I'll, I'll adjust it and we'll, I'll get back to you. <laughs> the uh, last thing that I think might be um, moving my groups around a little bit is uh, the regulator. I think it needs a reseal, like a little rebuild. So I'm going to order a kit. I'm going to do that. We'll make a video on that when it comes. Uh, and I'm also thinking about doing a, uh, a bit of polishing on the internals of the gun. But uh, yeah, I think that might might help quite a bit because mm, it's creeping a little bit. So it takes a couple of shots to sort of get the regulator nice and warm and ready to go. And then uh, once it's back to where it is, it's pretty consistent, but uh, yeah, could be better. So new O-rings. Well, we are about to get uh, completely deleted off the map by a record breaking storm. So. This might be the last time you ever hear from me, you never know. But if you like the video, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and uh, big thanks to uh, Herman Sporting Guns for supporting me with some ammo. Go check them out, hermansguns.com.au, and also big, big thank you to Crawford and Lift. Very generous, very nice of you to send me some lovely toys to play with right before I die. So <laughs> thanks, fellas, and uh, you can catch them, you can get them at Herman's Guns as well. Uh-oh. I better go inside. Bye. Mm -hmm.